Well, welcome to Actionable Intelligence. I'm Eric Greitens. Honored to be with you tonight. This is the show that respects your intelligence. We honor you as a citizen and we bring you the perspectives that so often the mainstream media ignore or just censor, which is why today and tonight we are so happy to have on Steve Cortez, Trump 2020 campaign senior advisor for strategy. Uh, From the start, Steve, you've been on top of the numbers about COVID, about the election, about holding the mainstream media to account. I'm really glad to have you back on. And I'd love to start, Steve. You've got a new op-ed out in the National Pulse this week titled The Future of America First in the Face of Electoral Larceny. Please, if you would, talk with our viewers through uh, what they can find there. Sure. I'm trying to, to lay the roadmap out for the, the path forward for the MAGA movement and for our country, both in the coming days as well as beyond that, into weeks and months and even years ahead. And I think the first thing, I, I lay out three specific steps. Mm. But before I get quickly to those steps, you know, I want to also say, I lay out in the editorial, that we need uh, to have the correct mental approach. We need to have yeah. the correct mindset right now because there's understandably a lot of anxiety out there. And believe me, I get that. And what's going on in our country is very, very disappointing to say the least. But I also believe that those of us who are involved in this America First movement and the populist nationalist cause, we cannot succumb to pe- pessimism. We cannot devolve uh, into a, a state of lamentation. Instead, we have to assess the situation. We have to act as you would have acted in, in actual war. This is political war now, Eric. Um, we have to assess the situation. Where do we stand and where can we now go best from here? And I lay out three actions that I think are really important. Number one, and, and this is as of right now, right this minute, this isn't long term, is to fight. Uh, We have to continue to fight. We know that we won the legal vote. We have to continue to fight so that this president will prevail and will be sworn in on January 20th. And what do I mean specifically? I mean fight in actual court. We need to continue to litigate and demand our rights and demand real transparency in these contested states. But we also need to fight in the court of public opinion. Mm. Uh, And that's where folks like you and I, or at least for me, I'm not a, a lawyer. That's where I effectively litigate. We need to continue to put pressure on particularly state legislatures because The fact that they voted on December 14th, that date is not in the Constitution. It is not set in stone. The only date in the Constitution that matters is high noon on January 20th. So, uh, look, I'm not going to try to to sugarcoat it for anybody. Uh, It is an uphill battle from here, but it is a winnable battle. So, I mean, I think that's number one is we have to continue Mm. to fight. Then number two, and I really urge the president to do this, is a special counsel. I think we need a special counsel named immediately by the president to investigate the laptop from hell the entire Hunter Biden saga. I almost don't like to call it, I I know by shorthand we just call it Hunter Biden, Eric, but I think it's really much broader than that because Hunter, in my view, was really the bag man for the Biden cartel. The head of the cartel is not Hunter. It's the big guy, it's Joe Biden himself. We face the very real possibility in just a few weeks of having for the first time in our history a commander in chief who is compromised by the most dangerous enemy of the United States, the Chinese Communist Party. So I think our current commander in chief has a responsibility to name a special counsel. And by the way, I think this is necessary whether President Trump prevails or not on January 20th. This makes sense in either scenario. Uh, And then I think the third thing is is candidates. One of the great, uh, there's great news about this election, not on the presidential level, of course, because of all the chicanery, but there was great news. President Trump had enormous coattails. Uh, Of the 27 contested House races, according to Cook Political Report, the Republicans swept all 27 of them. It was just amazing. Uh, The president had coattails from the state House races and legislatures all the way to the United States Senate. There's a lot to build on here. But what we've also seen, unfortunately, is a lot of Republicans really acting like squishes in these recent weeks. And I'll name names. I'm talking about people like Governor Kemp uh, in Georgia. We need to make certain that candidates are recruited starting now for races in 2022, as well as 24, who are America first Republicans, who are not establishment Republicans, who would not take us to a place of retreat. Retreat. Those candidates, I think, need to be recruited, trained, and financed, and ready to broaden this, this Trump America first movement. And again, I think that is the case, whether the president prevails or not, because here's the thing, Eric, I think the president, he will have a second term. Is it going to be consecutive as it should be, or will it be in 2024 when he's reelected? Obviously, I'm hoping and working and praying that it's in just a few weeks. But in either case, there will be a Trump second term, and we need to take actions to make this movement uh, become a dominant political force for decades. Yeah, Steve, I really, I, I think one of the, so much there to, 
to dive into. One of the first points that you made I think is so important is about mental strength, right? That if you want to be successful in any endeavor, whether it is SEAL team training, whether it's veterans coming back home and reintegrating into society, building a business, starting a movement, like we have to make sure that we've got that mental strength and that we also build a community of people who stay who stay strong as we go forward. Get Diving a little more specifically into the, the specifics about Hunter Biden, I think you make a really important point. People are focused on Hunter Biden, but as Hunter Biden himself said, you know, most of the things that have come his way weren't because of who he was as Hunter Biden. He admitted himself that he didn't know anything about uh, Ukraine. He didn't know anything about the gas industry. The reason why he was appointed to this board was because his father was the vice president of the United States. And it certainly seems that the the mainstream media, everyone recognized they did their best to ignore this story. Now they can't ignore it any longer. Uh, There's also a new poll out showing that a majority of likely voters, 52%, think that many news organizations ignored the Hunter Biden story. Steve, you've been uh, an analyst of this for, for a long time. What do you make of the fact that people are now recognizing that the mainstream media and big tech actively work to suppress this story? Right, Eric, this is real collusion, right? So in other words, the, the corporate media, the fake news media, obsessed over supposed collusion, which was a fantasy, the idea right. that, the, that the Russians conspired with the Trump campaign, which we know was never true, as verified by even the Mueller team, which was a, a team that was looking, believe me, if there was ever a team that was biased against President Trump, it was the Mueller team. Even they had to conclude there was no such collusion. But now we have re- very real collusion. And you know who was involved? I think there's really three powerful groups of people. It was corporate media, most obviously, and then all also big tech actively censoring and suppressing this story. But I also want to point to the intelligence community of the United States, because we had three former CIA chiefs, including John Brennan, uh, the most reprehensible of all, who signed an open letter to the American public telling us that this laptop, that this information was a Russian disinformation campaign. Uh, That was a ludicrous assertion without any basis in fact at all. We now know firmly that it was a complete lie. They did it to mislead the people. This is real election interference. It's real collusion by powerful interests. And they're not from Russia. They're from Washington, D.C. and New York, excuse me, and from Silicon Valley, uh, right in our faces. The corporate media is suddenly now willing to at least tepidly talk about this story. They still don't want to dive into it. But again, it's hard for me to overstate, Eric, how important this is to our national security. Putting aside my partisan predilections for a moment, just as an American citizen, the Chinese Communist Party is the most dangerous threat the United States faces in the entire world to our national security, our economic well-being, to our very health. That, That group of people, that nefarious regime, that thug regime in Beijing, they have co opted the entire Biden cartel, and I think that's the proper term for them. And we have substantial evidence, including eyewitness firsthand testimony from Tony Bobolinsky, that the quote, big guy is indeed Joe Biden, Joe Biden, a potential president of the United States. It's hard to overstate the consequences of this, which is why I hope and I believe the president is going to appoint a special counsel, particularly in case Joe Biden is able to complete the steal, and he's sworn in on January 20th. Yeah, and I want, I want to touch on, again, for our viewers, just a reminder, because there was so much that was happening coming up to, up to the election. You had organizations like JustTheNews.com who were coming out, and they were reporting on this relationship. Indeed, they'd been reporting on it for a while, this relationship between Hunter Biden and former Vice President Biden. They were reporting on the contents of the laptop. And then, as you alluded to, Steve, you had 50 former intelligence officials come out and say something which was absolutely false and with no evidence. They said that all of that was part of a Russian disinformation campaign. And in fact, there was no evidence for that at all. And as we now know, uh, Hunter Biden is under active federal criminal investigation, he said for his taxes. uh, But we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Talk, Steve, in, in just the couple minutes that we have left about why a special counsel in particular is so important in a case like this. Well, look, even if the president is sworn in, as he should rightfully be, I think we've seen uh, with with Attorney General Barr 
we've seen that even his own DOJ has been unable to achieve justice on some key topics. For example, the mis, uh, the, the crimes at least, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the poor ethics at least, perhaps crimes at worst of the Obama DOJ and spying mm-hmm. on the Trump campaign. Even his own Justice Department was unable, so has been unable so far to secure indictments. So we know that there's really institutional rot at the DOJ. And because of that, we can't count on the DOJ, even under his leadership, to appropriately pursue the Biden cartel. That's why I believe we need a special prosecutor. And of course, all the more so if, God forbid, Joe Biden is sworn in as president of the United States on January 20th. We cannot allow him to squash an investigation into his own family, into himself. So I really believe a special counsel is called for here. I think the president is is considering it right now and will soon institute one to protect the president, the, the, the people of the United States from a potential president who is compromised. We've never faced anything like this in our history. Uh, it's terrible that it's even a prospect, but nonetheless, we have to face the reality of what is in front of us, and it's a very real and perhaps dire threat. You bet. Steve, just 10, 10 seconds left. Uh, remind our viewers where they can follow you, please. You bet. Please follow me on Twitter. I'm at Cortez Steve, Cortez with an S, at Parlor. My name's in the correct order, Steve Cortez. I have a brand new chalk talk up about this exact topic of the Biden China scandal. Awesome, folks. That's Steve Cortez, Trump 2020 senior campaign advisor. You've seen him on this show before, and you can follow him on Twitter and Parler. We're going to be back in just a minute right here on Actionable Intelligence with some fantastic folks to talk about what's happening this week in the election. Talk to you. We'll be back in just a minute.